Hi, this is Meghna. In this module, we're going to learn constraints in MySQL. So why we have to learn constraints? Let's try to understand. So let's go back to MySQL. And let's see how many records I have in employee table. So I'm going to click on select this and click on execute. I think I don't have any records because I deleted it. So in the previous uh, tutorial, so I just executed this delete star from employee and that just removed all the records. Now, now what I'm going to do is let's go back and I'll try to insert uh, into employee values. I'll add some records here. Let me copy this and well, let me execute this. So select this line, click on execute. Now you can see I'll go to the other tab and do a select star from employee, select this and click on execute. You can see I have added one record. Now, now if I try to execute the same command once again, so let me try to execute this once again. And you can see here, it just added it. Now, if I go back, if I do select start from employee, so you can see that I've got the same record once again got added. So now my table, I have to make sure that I'll not enter this duplicate ID because ID is something which is unique for every employee. So I should make sure that there's not allowing duplicate values. Or I should also make sure that name is unique value. No two employees should have same name. I should also make sure that age of a person should not be less than 20 years or less than 18 years. So in this case, I can add some constraints. So these are called constraint. So as the name suggests, constraint is something which will restrict. Uh, so to maintain your business integrity or your entity integrity, entity is your like employee table. So to maintain the data integrity, you have to add some constraints which will help you to restrict the data uh, if you are trying to by mistake insert some values which are not supposed to be. Now, let's try to understand what are the different types of constraints we have, and let's say this. Now, now let me click on this. So these are the constraints that we have. As I told you, constraints will help you in maintaining data integrity. So we have five constraints. Let's try to understand. The first one is primary key constraint, and second one is unique constraint. Third one is check constraint, and not null constraint, and the last one is default constraint. So these are the five constraints we have. I repeat once again, primary key constraint, unique constraint, check constraint, not null constraint, and default constraint. And now let's try to understand one by one. Let's go back to MySQL once again, and let's try to understand. Now, now a primary key is something which will be unique for every table that you create. For example, for employee table, which will be very much unique for sure is employee ID. Now for customer table, there might be something called customer ID. For order table, there will be an order ID. So every table must and should have a unique value that identifies that particular record. And that is the primary key. So a primary key is the one which, is, which, will, which will be help, helpful to identify that particular row, all the records, that's the primary key. And remember, for a table, you can only have one primary key. So now, what does it mean? And now, to do that, now let me try to drop the table. So drop will remove the table and recreate the table once again. Now what I'm going to do here, so I'm going to drop the table, drop table employee. So when you execute this drop table command, the table will be gone. So now I click on this execute. Now if I refresh it now, you can see that the tables, I don't have this table. So if I go here and do a select star from employee and I click on execute, I'll get an error saying like um, um, the table employee does not exist. So you can see here, I'm getting an error. HRMS employee does not exist because I dropped it. So now we just learned that when you execute a drop table command, that will remove the table. So now I'm going to create once again, but this time I'm going to add ID, which is primary key. So now this is how you add a primary key for a table. So I'm giving this ID integer primary key. Now let's try to create the table with the primary key. Previously I created without primary key. That's why it allowed duplicate values. Now let me try to create it with the primary key. Now I'll go back here and now I'll try to add, execute this couple of times now. I'll execute, let me clear this uh, here. Let me, let me clear. So I've cleared all the previous commands. Now I'll try to execute this insert command. Okay, it worked because I don't have any records right now. The first record added 
Now let me try to execute once again because I have the same employee. Let me try to execute once again. Now I'm getting an error. So what is the error I'm getting? I'm getting this error as duplicate entry 1001 for key employee dot primary. So it's not allowing duplicate values. And that is the reason why you have to create uh, a table with the primary key and which will make sure that this value will not be allowing duplicate value. Now, now for name, okay, all good, primary key is not allowing. So now I need one more thing, uh, that name should be unique. So I don't want to allow make once again. Let's take that for my business requirement. Now I'm going to add this primary key uh, employee ID as 1002. Let's try to add the same name and let's see if that allows or not. So I'm going to select this and execute it. And it actually is allowed. I'll go back and see select star from employee. So let's go to this query and do a select star from employee and click on execute. And you can see that although the primary key is different because 1002 it allowed, but the name is same, which I don't want. So for that reason, so what I can do now, so I will try to drop the table once again. Let me click on this execute drop table. Let me try to add one more primary key for it and let's see what happens. So I'm going to write here primary key and now I'm trying to add two primary keys for a table and let's try to execute this. Now I'm getting an error saying like multiple primary key defined. So what does it mean? So for a single table, you can only have one primary key. But now uh, ID is already a primary key. Name also, I don't want all the duplicate values. So in that case, you can make this as unique key. So now I'll just remove this and I'll just write here unique. That's it. So now the ID is primary key and this column I'm making unique. When you make a column as unique, it will not allow duplicate values. And for unique, you don't have to write unique space key, just write unique. So now, since I already dropped the table, let me create the table this time with primary key and also unique. Let me try to execute this. Now the table got created, let's go back. And first I'll try to execute with 1001. Let me execute it. So record got added. Now I'll try to execute with 1002 and again, same name. So this time let's see what happens now. So I'll execute this. Now I'm getting an error. And this time I'm getting an error for duplicate entry make for employee.name. Because I've added this uh, unique constraint, it's not allowing duplicate values. So good. So that is the benefit of unique constraint. So primary key, what is the point? So primary key uh, will not allow duplicate values, will not allow null values as well. And a table can have only one primary key. And if you make a column as unique, it will not allow duplicate values. Now, now let's take, for example, I should not allow email ID as null. So now if I go back and let's try to add this 1002 and I'm adding here uh, Rajesh and now uh, let's try to put null. Null means like not sending the value. So now let's try to allow this uh, null and let me try to insert the record and it is allowing null value for it. Null means like you're leaving it uh, without entering this column. So if I go back and do select star from employee and you will see that it actually is allowing null value for email ID, but I don't want to allow null value for email ID. I want to make sure that when I'm inserting, I should add this email ID for every employee. So in that case, what you can do is you can actually add, let me drop the table once again and create the table this time with not null. So I'll go back to email ID, I drop the table, I'll, I'll go to this email ID and I'll give space and put not null. So when I add this not null constraint, when I'm creating table, it will not allow null values. So that is the benefit of not null. So let me try to execute it once again. We're creating a table with three constraints right now. Primary key constraint, unique constraint, not null constraint. Let me execute it. Now, now what we'll do is, so let's go back to this one. And now if I try to execute with null value, let's see what happens. So I'm going to execute it and I'm getting an error. So email ID cannot be null. So for sure, I have to enter email ID. So otherwise it's not allowed. So I'm writing here test at test.com and some dummy value. And now let me try to execute. So now you'll see that I'm getting this done. Now, 
Now the last constraint we have, so we just learned about three constraints. One is primary key constraint, unique constraint, and not null constraint. It's not allowing null values. And the next one we have, let's take for example, I'm trying to add uh, age of a person. Let's try to put here employee three, and I'll put here some name called Kiran. And let's try to put test to a test.com, and I'm putting age as 12. So ideally, anything less than, let's take 18, is not a valid age. Uh, it's, it's again is the law, like you should not have age of a person or something like less than 18 years or 20 years. So let me try to add with 12. Let's see what happens now. Let me execute it. Now it's it's actually allowing it. So let's go back to my SQL and let's do a select star from employee and let's see whether it's allowing or not. So it's it is allowing age 12, which I don't want to allow something less than 20. So in that case, you can actually add a check constraint. Let's go back and drop the table once again. And this time we'll create with check constraint. So I'm going to write here age, tiny integer, and check. And then write here age greater than or equal to 20. So when you write like this, a check age greater than or equal to 20. So anything less than 20 is not allowed. So now I will try to create the table with check constraint once again. Now let's go back and try to add the record with 12 age and see what happens. Now it's not allowing 12. So you can see here that the check constraint uh, is, is violated. So it's not allowing age uh, 12. So if I change it to let's take 21, it is going to allow. So you can see here it's allowing. So if I go back and we have just added age greater than equal to 20. Now you also want to make sure that email ID should not be duplicated so what you can do is you can also add unique for email ID as well. So let me drop the table once again, and let's add unique. And so, so what it will learn from here is that a table can have more than one column as unique. I want name to be unique. I want email ID to be unique. You can add more than one column to be unique, but primary key should be only there for one column, right? Or, so, or only one, I mean, you can have composite primary key, which we're not discussing, but, uh, you can have composite primary key we'll discuss in the next module and here we uh, just learned primary key a table can have only one primary key and you can have multiple unique keys we learned about check constraint we learned about not null constraint let me execute it now if i go back and now if i try to insert anything age less than uh, 20 it's not going to allow we just checked it before okay so we learned about four constraints right now. Primary key constraint, unique constraint, not null constraint, and check constraint. We also have one more, which is default. So, so we're going to discuss default in the next module. And thank you. And I hope you are clear with constraints. Thank you. And see you in the next module.